Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to the final installment of my three-part series with my man Marshall from Anvil Training and Development. This is one of my Coach's Corner episodes where I sit down and uh, just talk shop with some of my friends, colleagues, and people in the fitness space. So uh, the first episode was all about movement assessments. The second episode was all about creating good quality movement uh, through intentional training as well as some of the biggest issues that our clients face. And in this episode, we're going through the four stages of learning. Now, the four stages of learning goes like this. Stage one is unconscious incompetence. This is where you don't know what you don't know. Stage two is conscious incompetence. This is where you know that what you're doing is not quite right, but you don't know how to fix it. Stage three is conscious competence, which is when you know that what you're doing is right, but you really have to pay attention to what you're doing to get into good positions. Uh, and stage four is unconscious competence, which is where you don't need to think about it. This is an ingrained pattern that you've created throughout your life. Let's get this episode underway. One of the guys that I train is extremely strong. Like this dude is, um, you know, his bench press is intense. It's like it's close to 180 now and um and the reason why he is so good at benching is every time he sits down on the bench everything is exactly the same you know he when he grips the bar his hands are in exactly the same place when he sets his back it's done the exact same way um and when he feels it he puts his feet down one foot and then the other and it's always the same fucking foot you know he moves that one an inch or something and then and then once he does the rep it's blank you know there's no thought involved in that process um it's the same and this is the cue yeah the cue this is the habit loop this is the cue the response and then the reward like he's thinking about the cue is right i'm gonna bench he sits down on the bench and his brain goes boom and fires this fucking pattern that he's Mm -hmm. ingrained over and over and over again Okay, and then he probably gets into that flow state, and yeah. and, and his body like just kicks off that response and mm. that um, that chain of events, and yeah. then he wraps the bar up, he sits up, and he goes, "Boom! I feel good. That's the reward." But yeah. that response in between cue and um, reward, that's the fucking pattern, man. That's that habit. That's yeah. so important. Yeah, and that's not something you can just do you know it's uh there's no such thing as somebody that there are people that can learn this stuff quicker and generally the people that learn quicker are the ones that find a good sequence that works for them right at the beginning and then they just copy it over and over again they do the exact same thing um i've had a lot of trouble with my bench press because it took me a long time to find the setup that worked for me and now i'm you know months behind practicing it because i was practicing something else for a couple of weeks and then another thing for a couple of weeks um but you can see the results as soon as uh you know as soon as somebody starts practicing something um regularly i've got guys uh, most of the guys that i train when we warm up for squats we do a you know kettlebell squat hold like a little goblet squat hold um and at the start these guys are all like seized up um just getting down to parallel holding this goblet is a nightmare for them and it's like 30 seconds man it's not a long time um, and you know you can see their ankles just don't want to bend properly their feet are flat and rigid um and then now when they're doing this warm up you know they don't need to be told they just come in they'll do whatever they need to do and then when they sit down into that squat hold you know, things might be a little bit tight. You know, they've been walking around all day or napping or whatever it is. And, but they, they're able to work through it because they can feel everything. You know, they sit down, they go, okay, I'm at depth, whatever. Um, you know, hips are feeling a bit tight, but if I, you know, rock back a little bit, I get a bit more tension in the hips. It's going to push me down a little bit deeper. Everything's starting to feel good. And then by the time, you know, now it's been about six months with these guys and, you know, they say to me almost every week now, they're like, I cannot believe how much easier and how much more comfortable this position feels. I'm like, yeah, well, that's what happens when we do the same thing every single time. You know, we make sure that the technique is as perfect as we can possibly get it and then we rinse and repeat over and over and over again. Yeah, that's great, mate. Um, and that's that's a, that's a really... Um, important note is you know how you do everything is how you do how you do it sorry how you do anything is how you do everything yeah yeah and that warm-up is so critical 
Yeah. Um, but most people just don't really pay attention to how they move. But mm. that comes back to that educational um, yeah. component that you were talking about earlier, man, is like mm. you're, you're educating your guys. You're saying, hey, you know, the first month or something they come in, you're like, right, I want you to do this and this is why. Yeah. And you're doing that every day. If it's important, do it every fucking day, mm. you know, and then, um, you know, you, you layer upon that and you do something else. So you might do some work for, you know, mobility of the lower body and then yeah. you might go into the mobility of the upper body. Yeah. And then, you know, after a couple of months, you've given your clients, your um, training partners, colleagues, whatever, members of the gym, like all of these different tools. Yeah. So then when they walk into the gym, they go through, you know, their generic warm up or whatever, and then they make those drills specific to them, what they need. And, you know, you get everyone doing the same thing for the first month, two months, three months, but then, yeah. you know, from three months to six months or four months to six months, then they come in and they're all doing different things, but it's all applicable to them at that time. Yeah, I had a pretty rewarding moment today, actually. Um, you know, because we were away for the weekend, the one-on-one -on -one clients actually all just came in for a group session this afternoon. We just had a big group training session. It was pretty sweet. Um, and we had one guy, he's doing heavy squats, singles uh, for his competition in a few weeks. Um, another guy was doing speed bench with bands. Um, I was doing fucking like wide stance, high box squats with an SSB, like the most retarded shit <laughs> you could possibly do. And um, and I didn't have to give any direction to anyone. You know, the guy doing the bench press uh, did his warm up. You know, you could tell that he was he was getting his back in perfectly. And and when he didn't feel quite right, he's like ah, a bit more time on the bands. You know, a bit more shoulder mobility work. Um, the guy doing the squats. Um, he, you know, just kicked off, did the squat hold and all this stuff. And then he's working through his reps. And, you know, I've always said to them, you know, if you, if you do a set with the bar and it doesn't feel right, don't jump up the weight, just do another quick set with the bar and try and work through why it didn't feel right. Um, and then the other day I had another group session, a guy came in, he, he was doing bench press. He, um, he did a set and then I saw him get down and do some, um, cat camel like thoracic work um that i'd shown him ages ago because i could tell he just didn't feel quite right with his upper back so he's like oh i'm just gonna work on the cat camel position a little bit because um because he knows that if he doesn't do it everything's gonna be fucked anyway and it's good seeing like after six months of working with these people they come in and they are aware of what they're doing they don't need to be told you know people are very open to learning in an environment where they feel like learning is promoted and they feel supported um, they don't feel like they're doing anything wrong they're happy to go off and do some random shit because they know oh this is actually going to help with my lips um yeah it's it's pretty amazing seeing people go from you know i need you to do 20 reps of goblet squats before you start because otherwise you will not be warm for this lift to they do it by themselves because and they don't do 20 they do you know if they only need 10 and they're like oh things are moving pretty well then 10s what it is if they need 50 they do fucking 50 you know they get their bodies more than i do yeah man um that just reminded me of of where i lost my train of thought before <laughs> so i'll bring it back around yeah, to that um, when i get a, when i get a client come in and i'm going through a hinge assessment mm. um you know if i i won't give them any coaching cues i'll just grab mm. a trap bar or a barbell and be like i just want you you know light and I'll go i just want you to give me five slow reps mm. of a deadlift and you know, I'll assess them. I'll have a look at where their imbalances are. I'll have a look at what's going on. Um, and then, you know, for the most part, most people definitely need some help with that movement. So suck I, <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah. So I will literally like I, when I'm deadlifting, like I automatically get down into a good position because that's the pattern that I've created. That's the ritual that I have. Yeah. Right. So then if you know they're really heavy on the balls of their feet their knees are driving forward their torsos upright their tailbones tucked under um their you know shoulders are rolled forward etc then i literally have to talk myself into getting into that position so that i can show them yeah because i've gotten that good movement over and over again um and i think that's a really good um another good point here is you know and it ties in with what you've just said for the last 10 minutes 15 minutes or so is that People don't know what they don't know. Yeah. And when, you know, I know you're an educational coach, I'm an educational coach. Yeah. And the way that we approach things is, again, we want to give people the knowledge to be able to apply the correct tools at mm. the appropriate time. 
And, you know, for, for, for people listening, you need to understand the four stages of learning. So mm. the first stage is um, unconscious incompetence. This yeah. means that you don't know what you don't know. And then the next stage is conscious incompetence where, mm. okay, I know now that my deadlift is not as optimal as it could be, mm. but I don't know how to fix it. And then the next stage is conscious competence, yeah. right? Where you go, all right, well, I know how to get into a good position, but I have to talk myself through that process. And then the last stage is um, unconscious competence where yeah. you automatically get into a good position. And it doesn't matter if you've got 100 kilos on the bar or 200 kilos on the bar yeah. or you've done one rep or fucking 21 reps, like your movement pattern looks the same. Yeah. And you and I are both um, very similar in our approach and our coaching philosophy of, you know, taking people through those four stages of learning, because yeah. if we, if you're just one of those fucking people, if you're just a fucking cheerleader and you're just a trainer, um, you know, people stay in that unconscious, uh, unconscious, comp uh, in that people stay in that <laughs> unconscious incompetence yeah. or conscious incompetence, but they don't know how to fix anything. So I think um, giving people the knowledge and the education to be able to come into the gym and take fucking ownership of their own training session and yeah. do what's necessary for them at the time. I think that's super powerful, man. Yeah. I mean, um, I think that's where a lot of people lose their motivation too. You know, if you've got a PT that is going to take someone from unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence, um, but not tell them how to get out of there uh, because they're worried they'll lose a client and then therefore lose money, then um, you've got a PT that's not doing their job properly. Um, you've got somebody that's not going to stay with you because they're, you know, the natural human progression of something is I don't know I'm shit at squats to now I'm very much aware of how shit I am at squatting. Um, if I don't know how to get to the next stage, I'm just going to stop squatting. You know, I don't like doing stuff that I'm not good at because no human being likes doing stuff that they're not good at. Um, so it's really important as a coach, uh, especially if their coach is listening to this in future, to spend a significant amount of time with your clients telling them why they suck at something um, and explaining to them that if they understand why they suck they can learn how to not suck you know because everybody sucks at the start you know there's nobody that does a squat straight away and they're perfect you know but if you can tell someone you know you are getting um, you know butt wink at the bottom you're getting a lot of lower back movement at the bottom of this bottom of this squat um, it's probably something to do with the way your knees are tracking your ankle mobility or your hip you know hip range of movement whatever it is for that individual person um, and then you say to them this is how we're going to work on this stuff you know i really want you to focus on your foot position i really need you to focus on pushing your knees out when you when you sit back into the squat and i really want you to focus on keeping that core tight um, you give it to them as simple as you possibly can you train with them for as long as you can um, on that movement and then eventually you'll be able to show them this is why you are getting better and if you keep doing these things you are going to keep getting better until the point where you don't have to think about all that stuff just like you said um, people don't lose motivation if they understand why something doesn't feel right if they have if something sucks and they don't know why they're not coming back you know matter of weeks yeah man yeah i want to go back to what you said before about your bench press yeah um because that kind of ties in with everything that we're talking about you know you try something for a couple of weeks and you're you know you, you bash away at it for a little bit and you're going ah oh, fuck this is just still doesn't quite feel right but yeah. you know you stuck with it for a couple of weeks and then you went all right i need to make some slight adjustments and then you make some slight adjustments and you know you keep going through that process and i think that's you know that's very important to understand is everything is about constant refinement yeah, yeah. you're constantly you know trying to you know, you're going through these movements, but then you're being intentional with it. You're paying attention to mm. how you're moving, moving, how it feels, um, what your strength levels are like, your stability at certain joint angles, certain joint positions, etc. Yeah. But then you're making these minor tweaks, man. Can you talk to me about that process for you? Um, my training, well, one of my biggest training philosophies, one of the things I really focus on here is, um, is training your weaknesses. Um, and to train a weakness, you need to be aware of it. Um, so one of the things that I do not do in here is tell people how great they're doing at everything all the fucking time. Um, obviously, I will motivate them 
um, and I like to encourage them and, and show them the progress that they're making because it's important to understand how far you come and why. Um, but it is also extremely important to understand what you suck at and where it's falling apart um, because then you have no idea what you, if you don't, you don't know what to work on. So for me, it's always a case of, um, you know, why has something fallen apart um, or why isn't it moving right or, you know, why did I miss that lift? Um, usually it's a mental thing, uh, especially with really fucking heavy weights. Um, you get under a heavy bar and it's so easy to psych yourself out. So you need to have a really good pre-lift routine. Um, but that's one of the things that I really like about lifting heavy weights and teaching people how to lift really heavy shit uh, is that you don't get tested like that under light stuff. You know, it's, it's very rare under sub-maximal load that you will get pushed to the point of failure, um, whether it be mental, technical, whatever. Um, you know, unless you're doing hundreds of reps, but usually that's fatigue, you know. So um, I like to get somebody under a 1RM in the safest possible situation, you know, whether it be like I did today, a high box squat with the SSB, like there's not a lot that can really go wrong in that situation. But if something does, um, let's say that I sit down onto the box and I can't get back up again, the first question that I ask myself is why? Why did I fail that lift? Um this is something that I think is important. Like for coaches, uh, it's pretty easy to see why the person that you're training is experiencing failure. Um, you can see technical breakdown. You know, I can see if their feet aren't in the right position or if their chest isn't up or their upper back's falling apart or they're just not breathing properly. But for myself, I can't see that shit. Um, it's really hard. So I make sure that I always ask, um, you know, Dan, the other coach or one of the other guys that works here to watch me when I lift and just tell me, like, you know, be honest. What am I fucking doing wrong? Are my feet, like in the bench press like you are talking about before, are my feet moving all over the fucking place? Um, are my hips lifting up because I'm pushing through my feet the wrong way? Am I getting my back into the right position? Um, am I gripping the bar wrong? Because um, like I said right at the start of this, human beings fucking hate doing things differently. My body will find a way to do it the way it has always done it. Um, and if I suck at benching, then it's going to find a shitty way to do it. Um, so teaching myself a new movement pattern is really fucking hard. And it means having someone watch you and take you through your lift and go, no, nah, your elbows are flaring way too early or your, um, your shoulders and your pecs are taking over because you're not holding your upper back in the right position. Um, and then obviously drop the weight back, spend a significant amount of time working on maintaining that position, focusing on that weakness, build that area, watch yourself get better. Yeah, that's fucking awesome, man. Um, I want to start winding up the episode, mate. Um, yeah. Is there anything okay. else that you can, uh, any other points that you can make for uh, anyone listening to this episode? Um, look, in regards I, to health and fitness. Yeah, I would just say um, be open to to being told stuff you might not want to hear with regards to your lifts or your fitness or stuff like that. You know, it's not always going to be good news all the time. Um, the the whole point of getting stronger or getting fitter or getting better at moving or just getting healthier in general is to find the things that you're bad at and hone in on them with laser-like focus, you know. Um, it means unfortunately getting comfortable with being a little bit uncomfortable most of the time. Um, so if you are somebody that is constantly seeking out um, the things that you're good at, if you really like, if you're really fucking good at deadlift, so all you do is deadlift or you're really good at bicep curl. So all you fucking do is bicep curl. Um, you're probably not doing yourself any favors. Uh, so yeah, really be open to, uh, to maybe a perspective that you're not used to. Yeah, great point. Constructive criticism is yeah. always welcome in my world uh, from other people, but I'm my harshest critic, man. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm after every single, if I'm doing like a heavy strength cycle, I'm fucking paying attention to every single rep that I do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm visualizing it prior to, you know, going up to the bar. And my, my lift starts before I even touch the bar. 
it starts yeah. as I approach the bar, as my rest period starting to count down, I'm looking at the bar, I'm like, right, fucking 10 seconds, I'm on, yeah. you know, and that's where my, my visualization starts. That's when my lift starts. And I can count on probably one hand over the last five years, how many reps, how many lifts I've missed. Yeah. Because if I know that if I'm already fucking, if I've already missed that lift in my head before right. I've even touched that bar, I don't even fucking bother lifting, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I said it. Hurt. I say to my clients or anyone that I'm training with, uh, if you take it out of the rack and it feels fucking heavy, put it back because <laughs> you've already fucked it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a, that's a good point, man. Um, you know, about paying attention to your movement. And this is where in my warm up sets, my ramp up sets, for example, you know, last week I might have hit whatever, 240 kilos for a deadlift, sumo deadlift, mind you, which I know you don't I care about. <laughs> no, I do. I sumo, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, if I hit a one rep max um, 240 last week, but then, um, you know, I'm, I'm building up to a one rep max this week and 220 feels fucking heavy mm. for a single, then I'm not going to jump up to no. 240. I might just go, eh, two, I know I can hit 230, I'm going to hit 230 and I know I've, I've already kind of mentally know that I'm not going to hit 240 that day. And that's fucking cool. Yeah. That's okay because maybe I haven't slept very well. Or maybe yeah. um, I haven't eaten as much or maybe I'm in a calorie deficit for a couple of days or yeah. maybe my body's got some inflammation. I'm overtrained. I'm under recovered. Like all of these things come into play, man. So um, I think that's a really good place to wind up, mate. Um, I, I would definitely love to get you back on again because this yeah. is a fucking awesome conversation, man. And I could definitely continue going for, yeah. you know, another hour. But yeah. I've only got two hours of uh, interview time per That's month it. with this software. So All good. Um, good to go, mate. Appreciate you having having you on the podcast, bro. We'll definitely need to do this again. Thanks for having me, man. I always appreciate it. Um, we always cover some really good shit. So, yeah, I look forward to next time. Love it, mate. Let's chat again soon. Cheers, Cheers. Marshall. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully, you got some really positive takeaway points from this three-part series with Marshall from Anvil Training and Development. I will have all of his links in the show notes. Uh, any five-star ratings and reviews are much appreciated. It helps me spread the message. It helps me spread the love. It helps me get um, bigger people on the podcast so that I can interview them for your listening pleasure. Much love, guys. Peace. Peace.